In today's video, I have this Sony tape corder. This is a non-cassette tape player or tape recorder. Rather old, possibly even back to the 60s, this thing, or 70s, not sure, is it solid state? Sony-O-Matic. I forgot I even had this thing and found it while cleaning up the garage under some other junk. It's a TC357-4. Runs on, ooh, oh yeah, all voltages, 240 volts is there as well. For a minute, I don't think it was. Cords have been cut off, of course. Lots of cobwebs in there. Looks like it's got a speaker built into the front here under the grill. Looks like an oval, yeah, I can just see it, oval speaker. So it's got an amplifier in it. Auto slash auxiliary tone. Is that a switch? It is. AC switch and mic slash playback, so maybe it's volume and mic record level. Ooh, that's stuck. Oh, it does lock. Oh, that's this. It pops up, locks in. Inst stop. Counter VU meter, forward rewind stop. So this is probably only a mono one. I saw some socket somewhere. Microphone, auxiliary, line out, external speaker. See, I think yeah, we've just got a mono. Oh, you can turn the internal speaker on and off. And what's this rotary? Oh, that sets the 240 volts. Oh, yeah, it's like a easily pulled out thing, which, and three prongs that short the right terminals of the transformer together. So, quite a clunky old thing. Quite heavy. I wonder if I can get under that main scooter without pulling it to bits. I don't think I can. <laughs> oh, well, let's have a look inside then, I guess. Looks like we take these screws out. That's the one. Probably shouldn't lift it by the reels, but I just want to know if anything's actually happening. Uh, we've got more screws here, but I look at it. I wonder if that's probably. Oh, yeah, that's. Uh, so maybe I did, I'm undoing the wrong ones anyway. This is the one that's allowing the chassis to move. I think those others might just be to hold the plastic on. <laughs> Sounds a bit of a waste of time. Well, it moved a little bit. Definitely a bit through. It still feels attached up this end. That is definitely that in there. So maybe the handle. Oh yeah, they feel like quite long screws. Ah yes, that's what we got to undo. Someone's replaced it with starter cord or something. <laughs> the original handle obviously broke, I guess. Probably an old leather one that fell to bits. I've got a free dead spider or something under there. Oh, now we're getting loose. Do we need to remove the front panels and moving with it on one part? Oh, the chassis. That's why those sockets are so deep set in there. That end moves without speaker grill, that end's attached to it. Or oh, maybe these. There's definitely something here holding it. There is one screw on the feet. That'll be the one probably. The other feet have all got like nuts on them. But of course this thing doesn't drop out I guess on me, but that's probably, yeah, it's quite long. Oh yeah, that was it I think. Problem is working out how to get them apart. Well, look at that. Yuck, that needs a good clean. And does the speaker unplug? Come on, it's a Sony, it's got to have a plug, hasn't it? Oh, we've got valves. So this is a 60s unit, I think. That's on a funny angle. Oh, dear me, what's going on there? That's just on rubber mounts, I think. So if it's valve technology, it probably doesn't have connectors because. No, it's soldered on to the, I guess you're meant to work on it like this. I might unsolder that so I can clean everything. I don't fancy trying to brush it off with the two pieces attached. Maybe I could hold, we've got here a bit of wood. One of the parts of the cabinet. It's got a few things written in there from quality control or whatever. Is it a fan? Yeah, there's the fan. So that's what that plastic thing underneath is. It's a 
air intake of some sort. Uh, full of cobwebs. Spiders are having fun in there. And yeah, wow, well, this is valve tech. I did wonder whether it would be. Don't know why that one's mounted. Its socket's mounted in some rubber mounts. Maybe to. Maybe it's because these, of course, these were considered portable sometimes. You'd like um, people would walk around doing interviewing people with these on a shoulder strap or something. So it could be that valve's likely to get microphonics or something from being bumped around. So they probably mounted it like that to stop it causing actually any audio interference. Because you've got to remember, valves aren't just fragile and large and heavy consumers of power. They are also prone to noises and stuff, I think, from being bumped around. Although this thing is not battery operated, so I don't know. You wouldn't think a non-battery operated thing would be considered portable. So maybe I'm completely wrong about that. Probably am. <laughs> but it was a fair guess until I realised that. Very primitive old technology that by look at old looking parts. Does have sort of more modern type electrolytic capacitors and some green caps, so that's something. Weird old resistors, those tubular type, I think. And yeah, some old, almost looks like mylar capacitors or something. And what's the grease like in it? That's actually it's not too bad, <laughs> at least on that bit. Yeah, it's not completely sticky, it's not, the, not perfect. Got a big incandescent globe down there. And what's that? That's a potentiometer in some weird case. Must be. Oh, that's not multi-layer pot. Don't know what that's about. Great big motor with a looks like a motor start capacitor there to run the motor, no doubt. A couple of other electrolytics for the main rails, which could be who knows what. Possibly was that a speaker output transformer? I don't think so, because the speaker goes over there, but that's to the socket, so it could be a speaker output transformer. Oh, they actually come straight off. They're not wrapped around 15 times around the terminal. That's nice to see. Oh, well, yeah, no, neither of them is. Oh, that's really good because normally those, that era, everything was used to, people used to using tag strips and stuff and they wrapped everything around, even though it was never really going to come loose. I'll give that a clean. Okay, giving it a bit of a clean up and I've got a power cord on it. Let's see if it does anything. I see a light just flash in, maybe not. Oh, well, we're gonna turn it on there, I think. Oh, we have a light. Sounds like the fan's running. The old valves will be starting to glow, no doubt. Yeah, I can see two of them at least glowing. Motor's actually surprisingly quiet, so it'll make a little bit of noise. Oh, we have rewind. No fast forward though. Uh, tape speed. Now, how do we actually play the thing? Far oh, that's fast forward. Is it rewind, stop, oh, forward? So that's just fast forward, doesn't So that's play, that's rewind. Ooh, doesn't seem too heavy. Oh, here's some. Oh, I've got a massive. Is that a capstan down there? My god, it is. An enormous capstan run. That's that's what's making that horrible noise. Oh no, maybe it's not. That's when I connect to it. So it's some sort of idler or something. Pin troller doesn't seem to rise, it's slowly creeping up. <sighs> now I've got to be a bit careful of this. I'd like to work on it flat, but we've got valves to watch out for. I think if we remove this cover, we should be able to see what we got. Oh, so another area that needs a good cleaning. Let's give that a quick get us some grit and grot in there. Oh, is this some sort of head blockage? Ah, oh, see that's slow. Ah, oh, so that covers the tape up as it yeah, very slow to move. That's the pinch roller. Oh, that's really hard to move. And it's slowly coming back. Should that pinch roller drop like that? Just drop down. Ah, so when the tape's in there, 
We've got a little protective cover and a little dust remover. Didn't know they had that sort of thing. Quite clever. Pintrol is not engaging. Well, at least I won't chew a tape, I guess, because we can't even get the pinch roller in place. That's this arm here. Oh, there we go. If I push it right down, still no reel. Oh, that reel's solid, that's why. Oh, oh, there you go. Just turning it. Got it running again. So this probably could be made to play just as it is. Assuming, well, let's just, um, a screwdriver on, oh, well, they've covered up there, you know, and a screwdriver on the head should be enough to, oh, I don't have any audio hooked up, though. Don't have any speaker. And the other thing I better watch is, where's my speaker wires? God, it shouldn't be, hopefully it's transformer couple, but I've got to be careful what they're touching. I've got to tape that in place, I think, if, maybe it doesn't run at all without it. But, man, I don't want my voltage selector falling out. there's a risk something will change the voltage if it does that. Might just glue that. Tape that in place a bit. Try to stop that coming out and I better tape up the speaker connections. Oh, I could just use them at, to connect it up I guess. Rather than trying to find a 3.5 adapter which I do have somewhere. Oh, actually where's my normal speaker leads? I'm just solder them together since they're both already plated or tinned. Let's see if we've actually got any amplifier action because there's no point getting the tape going if the amp doesn't work, I guess. Just tape them up so they can't touch on anything or, or each other. I don't know. And we'll see if the tape head does anything. Of course, these valve things, you've got to wait a while for them to get going. Oh, yeah, it says 8 ohms there with 6k input and 8 ohms output. Oh, we're making that noise again. Better watch that fan too. Oh, I'm hitting the fan. <laughs> That's a bit random. Oh, is that the tape speed? I well, probably shouldn't change that while it's running. God, it's got a lot of different speeds. warm valves yet. Well something went pop. Hey, I can hear a bit of scratchiness. Sort of. Hey, the tone, we've got hiss but no seeming tape sound. Definitely got amp noise though. But yeah we don't seem to be, seem to be getting a lot of, oh, what's that other switch? Oh, that was that auto mode or whatever. Oh, we can switch, ah, oh, okay, so we've got a head switch between the different tracks by the look of it. One and four, or three and two by the look of it. So that could be an issue. heads. That's what I was expecting, a lot of noise, at least on one setting. Oh, do we? You can hear the hum go up when it, you know, on one side it doesn't seem to do anything. So let's try cleaning that switch I guess. This one just slides a bit better now. on both selections. Oh, 
Yeah, that pin troller seems to be getting into position on it because I haven't switched it off, that's why. I can say it's getting back on its own, but it's not. Now which bit? We're sliding across here, but I think the bits are it's on the other side, maybe. Is that that big lever? Yeah, there's a big lever under on the other side of the capstan. So we're gonna have to take this cover off at some stage, maybe. Powers off. There's a lot of live looking stuff in this, so be very careful with these sort of things. Plenty of high voltage in them. I guess I should get the heads clean, but the heads actually look terrible. There's a lot of, of a sort of flat surface bit on there. Looks to me like it's eaten out. Yeah, that's got a, I think that's a big wear patch in it. Oh, is that the erase head? Go, can't even see it for muck. Better clean all these things wherever the tape touches, even though I've only got some horrible old tape that came out of the same place. That's probably rubber, even that, my God, even that um, post is worn back to the brass underneath and probably this one too. So these, I don't know if it says a lot of use or very abrasive tapes or something in it, but it is worn. It probably was an issue with these things if you used them a lot, but yeah, now this is very worn. Yeah, this, this other post with a little red bit on it is also worn through the chrome or whatever coating. This thing's worn down. You can feel it with your fingernail. I don't know if there's any edge on the head, but the head's worn right across the face, so you're not really going to have an edge. Yeah, there is an edge on the top, I think. Where's a little screwdriver? Shouldn't really run a screwdriver over the head, but yeah, it's definitely got a lip on the top there, on the top of that head. Oh my god, there's a, something in the middle. And yeah, big lump on the bottom as well. I can feel some sort of where these little marks are. There's something in the middle and that actually, the screwdriver catches on it. So I think we can say this thing's getting pretty worn out, but it'll probably still work to some degree. It's not like it's a hi-fi machine to start with, so it's really not a much of a machine other than just for people that wanted to maybe record off a microphone or something. I don't think this one's really made for music. But I do have a couple of old tapes. I'm not sure if they're actually going to fit on this thing though. One grotty old tape. Oh, it looks like it can fit a big reel on there. Amazing. Actually, I've got some old Tandy tape here. I actually do have a couple. I think I bought a couple just for the artwork. And does this have to go? Well, that's the way the tape is. I don't know whether the label should be up or not. This doesn't actually have anything to hold it in place I don't think, the spools type of thing. So that I assume goes under all those bits, around that bit. And what do we do? Feed it in. Do we just slot it down there? I think that's all you kind of did. It seems to, oh it's coming out. <laughs> Was working, seemingly. But I think that's the general idea of it. leave a longer piece there so while I'm fiddling around. Oh, now I've lost it off over all the head. But that was kind of the hassle of these things. A bit of work to set up. That's why the cassette was such a good invention. That might be it, something like that. Oh, that's going to slip, I think. Oh, what do you do then? Uh, we round all the bits. action until we get a pin troller in place. There we go. Yep, we're going backwards, I think. We've got to wait for these valves to warm up, of course. Sounds like we've got some weird oscillations or something. Yeah, I think we do. That's we 
which is pretty short, I think. Ah, oh, that's a, like a pause, is it? Well, an extended pause when the pin trailer doesn't come back. Oh, that noise only happens when you turn the volume right up. So we've got an audio issue. It's not very loud. Well, one of the other problems is, God knows we're going way too slow by the sound of it. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> Well, now we're too fast, so it must be that 9.5 centimetre thing. Worse than a record player, if you've got to work out what the speed is. That's a pub with no beer, so I think it's, it is running the right direction. <laughs> Oh, not the greatest, but it is running. I'll we'll just see what this sounds like if we adjust the azimuth a bit. It's probably just worn out heads, but who knows. Of course, they instantly stop singing right at that moment. Not a lot of difference, that tape guide seems awfully loose. Well, I'm not sure if the amp's just dead or the heads aren't picking up very well, but it's certainly not putting out much output. Oh, we've got a record playback switch. Oh, that could be another issue. Didn't even think of that. Great big long record playback switch here. Ugh, very hard to move too. Let's give that a bit of a squirt as best I can. I wouldn't have thought putting electrolytic capacitors near valves was such a good idea. Well, cleaning that record playback switch seems to have made it louder. Horrible and distorted, but louder. I don't know what the tape's actually like, it doesn't really help. I wish I could remember what I did with some other old tapes. The chances are this tape's still reasonable. I think the head's just extremely worn out in it. But it sounds like the amp is still working reasonably well besides that bit of oscillation. I mean, this arm could be lubricated. If I don't know there's a lot of point doing any more with this thing. It's just interesting to have a look and see if it still worked and if we could get something out of it. So you have to hit record and forward or something. Anyway, oh yeah, we've got a red light on there. It looks like it's stuck in record. Oh, now we've got it out. Don't think the fast forward works either. I'm trying to do something. I'll just rewind this one. I did find one of the other tapes. Just in case that one's completely shot, which who would know? It could be. Oh, I think that's still on there. I don't know if there's anything on this tape, but this is a Tandy old Tandy Radio Shack one for the recording perfectionist. Yeah, I don't know about that, but 28th of 680. I wonder if that's when it was made, possibly. Oh, yeah, this is still got the proper leader tape on it, although spliced on there by the look of it. See if there's any music or anything on this thing. 
you wouldn't know what would be on it. Still got the problem of no idea what the quality of it is either. But I guess I can try and loop it in there the same way and see if I can get it to play. Ooh, that only just hung in there. Is it going to make it? I think once it wraps around once, it's pretty right. Ooh. Oh no, we've got a twist in it. Don't know how I manage that, but I've got a twist in it. That flapping around sound was always the indication that you reached the end of rewind, so it was actually kind of useful. when I pull this up into here yeah it's trying to twist gotta go that way I think no that's what caused it maybe yeah I worked around on the last one so maybe I've got to pull it that side in first yeah there's a bit of a key to it. I think what you did was wrap it around uh, how do I manage that <laughs> wrap it around once and then we should be right hopefully So it goes to show it's worth trying a different different tape in there. Now that's quite a long one, Bolo. I don't know how, how long did they go for. It just gives you feet, I think. 1800 feet or 548 metres. There's half a kilometre of tape on that reel. That's insane. But to be fair, a lot of other things probably are one mil tape, seven inch reel, 23 micrometres, 18 centimetre reel. So it probably is getting into the 80s if it's got both imperial and metric measures on it. Tape speed, oh, anyway, so we've got to work out the, does this give us the time? Times in one direction, mono, stereo, double for two directions, quadruple for four track, mono, so time in minutes, I guess. What was this one? 1800 foot. So one direction mono stereo at, well, it depends on the tape speed, I guess. You've got 192 minutes, 96 minutes, or 48 minutes. Not seven and a half inch a second, obviously. Yeah, very slow, one and seven eighths. So that's about, seven, you know, well, not quite seven times the speed, but I guess it's really more four times the speed or a bit over. Makes a lot of difference, I think, in quality. What are we on? 9.5 centimetre, three and three quarter. So we're on that middle quality level. So we should get 90, it should be 96 minutes. It's an hour and a half of audio on here. That's quite impressive. Don't think I want to hear an hour and a half of that though. I suspect there's a little bit of wow there. I guess it you probably should check things like the capstan's reasonably free, but yeah, you could definitely do with a bit of a lube. Oh, actually, I might uh, I might leave them like that for now. I don't care too much about that tape. Yeah, I think we've got to take these bottom ones. Someone's chewed this screw out while well, it looks like someone's had it apart, probably. Is that coming? Just. I think we're going to take all this off to get to the, get the plastic bit off. Uh, and that's going to have to come off as well. The knobs, I guess it makes sense. Which means that tape speed one, which is not something I'm going to enjoy prying off because it's probably fragile. Unfortunately, this is where you end up breaking things if you're not careful. That just pops off. Oh, that came off fairly really easy, just a little spline shaft. Does that have a screw off? And these had a. Yeah, grub screw. That's simple enough. Get that whole menu out of the way, that needs a good clean. 
probably a good chance to give it a clean. Let's see what we've got in here. Wow, look at the belt in it. That's solid, but it's a bit stretched, I think, but probably okay for what it is. I'm going to have to take it outside yet again and clean all the muck out of it. Okay, now we can have a look at a bit of the drivetrain in this thing. So there's your capstan. That's actually spinning amazingly well. This is the bit that the pin troller runs on. Where does it come back to there? I think is the pivot point. That's the bit that's slow moving. Might even just quickly pull that pin troller out and give it a clean and that definitely wants a little bit of a lube. I don't think it's causing too much issues, but what's this? There's some sort of plastic washer thing here, I think, stopping it coming off. Ah, can't get my fingernail under it. What the hell? Oh, God, I do get it and it slips off. Can you fiddly little... That's it. One of those super thin things. So it's actually this whole piece probably wants a little bit of a loo. I might just, I'm not going to re bother restoring this thing or anything, but we'll just give it a quick bit of oil. Oops, some of that ran down there, which probably is not a good idea, but I think it's only the, so the capstan's actually wheel driven, so not belt driven. We're going to have a little bit of oil on that shaft. Give this thing a quick clean. I wish I know the pin troller was pretty good then. That is one dirty pin troller. Very brown with oxide. Look at it coming off, my god. The amazing thing is all this rubber is in quite good condition. It may be starting to go a little hard, but it goes to show they could make good quality rubber if they wanted to and something just dropped off then I say there was a washer underneath there that I've just flicked off I think that'll probably do it's an actual separate oh it's got a loose hold on oh it's a little brass piece that's loose in there oh god all sorts of stuff trying to fall off here is that the underside I think it might have been so it's got a little loose brass washer thing there not the sort of thing I like to see maybe a little lacking lube still but I'll put a wet on there so there's not much more I can do with that but it's, it doesn't spin on quite as much as I'd like but may not be meant to might be as good as it gets but at least that's lubed but yeah, without pulling that whole shaft out and cleaning everything and that's the capstan part that runs it and that has got some muck on it at least it just comes straight off too, amazing, so it's not bad. I can't remember if I actually even gave the captain a clean before. But man, there's so much mass in that, it's amazing. I might give that a clean around the... Oh yeah, she's pretty rough where the rubber runs. That's probably a job for a scourer, ideally. Something like that to get rid of those little bits of embedded sort of rubber stuck on the surface yeah that's quite rough probably helps it grip though at least bit of corrosion on this thing oops uh, why can't I get that to spin yeah it spins pretty free so that's the main motor shaft I guess is it? no yes oops something fell off yeah, that's the main motor. The motor comes up here on that one. Oh, that's just our fast forward knob. Was that the fast forward knob? I think it's that there. It's that somewhere around there. Yeah, that belt's a bit lumpy and horrible. In a perfect world, you'd put a new one in. That may be adding a bit of wow to the sound. Motor's free. That's nice and free. Yeah, belt's pretty dirty and horrible, but do for now. Now that real. Do we have. I think the brakes are disengaged. Oh no, there is that brake. And it's still very tight and got all this muck on it. Something's been living in here. 
Uh, yuck. Not cobwebs, but it's more like cocoons or something, or spider nests or something's been built in there. Now, that's the counter belt, that's very dodgy. Now, I think you undo these reels by taking this off, and no doubt there's going to be a heap of loose washers and stuff under that. I don't think anything on top is loose, oh, yeah, there is. What is there? No, I just wiped the grease off, I think. Yeah, that's fixed. That's the poly bit for the... Oh, we've lost a bit of our felt pad here by the look of it. Oh, that's probably not in the best condition. That all feels nice and free. This didn't seem to spin the freest. So I think it does have some... Yeah, it's quite well oiled. That's got to drop into that lower part, I think. Like so, take this brake off, is that just the belt slipping that's causing a bit of friction? That might be what it is. I think that belt's a bit... Yeah, it's definitely freer without the belt connected. Might even drop a bit of oil down. Keep it off that felt pad though. Go away, break. Oh, it's actually rubbing on this other belt when I do that. Maybe that's what the problem is. If I move that far enough across, it's still a bit. Belt isn't turning. Anyway, that'll do. Someone's, uh, it's a flat blade as well. Someone's chewed out any Phillips that used to be there. There is a little black washer. I thought I saw a black washer on the other one and then it disappeared. Don't know, maybe it didn't have one, but that was in a different spot anyway. Oh, so we've got a clutch assembly. That's all rusty. Whether it affects it though. Another sort of felt bit, which actually looks like that's oily, which I doubt it should be. Then again, this does actually run, maybe it is meant to be oiled. Because it's not a clutch. Yeah, I think that's reasonably well oiled, so it's probably good but doesn't exactly spin the freest that bit's okay a bit more felt missing something's been chewing on it i'd say uh, it's kind of rusty looking that oil or grease whatever it is yeah that's a bit i wonder if there's a bit of friction there from the Rust, possibly. That's still pretty good though, really. I might just put a little bit more oil on around there just to get it going. Again, keep it off the felt. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, flat blade, isn't it? There's a little washer goes down, which makes sense to stop this thing rising up to the screw. The other one didn't have one. That's actually, that's got a little bit of play. This one's got more, probably because it's that bit's missing. If there was one there. Yeah, look at that belt, that does not look real happy. Making a bit of noise. Very lumpy feeling. 
that's our rewind oh the counter's almost going but that belt's basically shot that's play mode so that brings this one into the motor so it's direct drive we do have a clutch there I don't know how it's not the most talky thing but it seemed to pull the tape through all right that's actually got so that might have back tension on it. it's actually got a brake on at the moment so maybe it gives the tape a bit of back tension oh that's no, is it on or not no it's not fully i think it's bent i think is part of the problem <sighs> is that how it's meant to go let's uh, it's not coming back in very quickly either Yeah, maybe that's why someone bent it a bit. Could do it a bit more in that direction. Should really be turning the power off when I do this, but yeah, that's better. That's the brake. I think, yeah, that belt's actually touching on that. So that's actually direct driving. I guess there is no other way of driving it. So the outside of this belt touches on this lower red part to, hit, to put it into rewind. That's got a lot of torque though, that's, I mean you can eventually stall the, make the belt slip on the motor pulley. That's play. If that's fast forward on, ugh, what is that thing? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a leech. Is that a piece of rubber? Ugh, horrible. Not very often you see something that horrible in one of these things. Now where's the... If that sits there, what the? Yeah, it sits on that post, so that should push down a bit. Ah, yeah, so this is the bit that's. Ah, so it lifts. What does it do? It's trying to lift the pulley. Well, that's not going to work, is it? Ah, oh, it's meant to go up to this red, but it's the motor pulley's in the way. Is it meant to push? Oh, God damn, just falls off on me. So it meant to come back and push this up higher. Uh, uh. Yeah, I can't see that lifting. So wait up, maybe when we're at, ah, yeah, that's it. So you've got to definitely be out of play mode. But that is not coming across like it should. Ah, it does actually work. Okay, so when you're not in play mode, you press fast forward down, put it into the rewind mode, and then it lifts up and connects to this. Okay, so there's nothing wrong, it's a little slippy. Nowhere near the torque of the other one. Oh, it's slipping the red against the wheel. I just didn't know how to use it. That's why it helps to have a look inside, because then you can actually see what's going on and how it's meant to work. There's a lot of black rubber coming off that, so I think that wheel might be a bit shot. Just in case there's any oily stuff on there, we'll get that clean. So what do we do? We press down. Yeah. Doesn't stay down, does it? Bit of a weird design, but we press down. No, it hasn't made any difference to the torque. stops quite easily is it in the right so it's just pulled by that spring so i guess we could pull the spring a bit harder maybe yeah that helps not that much though yeah, it's not an awful lot of difference it really does that surface to surface is not working well Oh, at least that solves that problem. And yeah, I don't know what else. Not much else I can do. I just have this um, play mode. Is that play mode? That's rewind. That's play. We've got this piece is meant to, it's not even moving now. Oh, I see it pushes the pinch roller up as it comes in. 
Oh no, it pivots under here somewhere. It pivots under this pin here. So this piece has to come off. Uh, come on now. This could get interesting. Guys, at the time already. Okay, good magnetic one helps. I say we've got another screw, I can feel it. There it is. Oh, what do we got here? So do we need to disconnect? This looks like it's gonna be a fairly involved job. Uh, it didn't do anything. What? <laughs> we gotta undo it there. What the hell is that plate doing? Oh, Jesus. Well, that was a waste of time. I assumed there was some sort of link between the two bits with this top plate holding them together, but it's not the case. I don't know what that does then. Oh, this was that pause mechanism. Also, just puts a brake on there. Is that all it does? Stops it by breaking it? That seems a bit weird. Makes the clutch slip, I guess. Uh, wires in the way. Okay, that can go away. Oh, now I can get the screw out. Let's see. It seems to be coming, but something still. Uh, we'll get the wiring, of course, and this spring here, and that's it, I think. Get this spring off. We should be right, I think. So they've bent it closed. Get that off the chassis. Ah, bingo. Yeah, that's going to be the pivot point there that's seized. This just, this just falls out. Oh my god, look at it. I've lost a little bit of red muck there that it runs on. The grease is certainly not the best. That's a nice big heavy one here. There's where the belts, or the idlers. Oh, it's got two different... Oh, is that, that probably changes the speed as well or something. It's reasonably well lubricated. It was all running fine, so I don't think I'll mess with that at all. I need to undo this circlip. Oh, what have we got here? A screw. Oh, we don't know for sure this bit's seized, but it sure feels like it is. It could be this little piece or something, but... Oh, something's falling off. Where did that come from? Definitely got to remagnetize that screw. Oh, that's actually jammed there, I think. Oh, is that, that's a brass screw. Yeah, that'd be right. Now this bit, fairly free, a few hairs and muck in there, but yeah, that's not too bad. That may have to come out to get this thing out. Oh, can we now? We can push it up there. We're gonna have this spring in the way. We've got a little brass bit there, which is probably gonna be pretty iffy as far as lube goes. It's a little roller on a pin down here. It's not too bad though. circle out of there. Is there anything on that shaft? What is that thing? There is something up there. It's got this shaft that comes up here. That's got that little worn metal bit on it. I wonder if that, that is adjustable by the look of it. I wonder if that sets how much tension on the head or something. Don't know. Oh, there's a washer underneath, so I better watch a little shake proof washer. I always have to do things like that to make it difficult to reassemble. And there's this big spring on it. I think we're going to have to release that. Bend it back a bit and pull it off. Oh, come on. Might be a job for the big side cutters, that one. And it's just 
just a matter of, uh, is it going to come off? Because it's so jammed on there. Probably need some penetrating fluid or something to... Oh, we've got an, an idler on there, of course, as well. So we need to take that back off anyway. I'm not idler, it's a um, pin roller. And see if I've lost that little bearing out of there. Uh, here we've got this plastic thing again. Although, when I put it back on, I'm pretty sure it went on. Yeah, it's in there, so I wonder where the other one came from. It doesn't have one on the other side. Well, it might be a good chance to lubricate that little arm as well. I'm not even sure I can get this out yet. But at least there's nothing stopping it coming. Although that lever would be handy to get out of the way. I may have to, because this is going to be as tight as... Ugh. Yeah, that's super tight. Put a bit of oil in there might help, but I'm not sure it's going to really get down in there. Probably could shove a screwdriver down and try and force it up a bit. But remember, this is die cast. I think it's zinc or something hard, but there is a risk it'll break. In fact, the whole metal pin's moving with it. Oh, shoot. shoot. We're probably better off lubricating this little kind of riveted end bit there. Because I think it's so seized, that's at least partly moving, but it does also move independent, I think. It's starting to, I think I'm starting to get it a little looser. Okay, the printed trading fluid didn't feel like it did much, but I have managed to get a screwdriver on it and forced it. Almost feels like you're going to bend this metal plate or something. I got it part way up. So there's quite a good gap there, but I might actually push it back down a little bit if I can. And now that I've put some more penetrating fluid on the bottom, see it's sometimes moving it up and down a bit will get enough of it in there to make it easy to remove. Don't know how it goes, it's a bit risky doing anything with this, but I'll try and squeeze it back down with some pliers. Problem is I do have to press on the metal to, oh yeah, that's going down fine. That's, I wouldn't think, normally you wouldn't think putting it back on was a good idea, but if we get some lube, sliding up and down a bit that should loosen it off a lot you'll get lube in behind it ah oh, it's moving a lot easier now it goes so far and then stops although maybe it's because i'm hitting i'm probably hitting on that thing is the problem ah oh, yeah now it's starting to free up i've got the screwdriver turned sideways in there which is good in a way but it also means i can't go any further easily but what we'll do is put a bit more lube in there and i think i'm going to slide it back down again a couple of times oh yeah that's getting much better and sometimes yeah but counter as intuitive as it is it's sometimes better to go back and forwards yeah now i'm not having to use anywhere near the force i was really pushing so hard i thought i was going to bend the steel plate is what it felt like a bit Maybe you know, I can probably get the side cutters or something to lean. Probably shouldn't lever it on that lever, but anyway, it's getting pretty loose now. Like I say, once you work a bit of that stuff in there, it's much safer to do. Much less likely to damage anything or break anything. It actually had a bit of a hollow in the middle of it anyway, so it was only these two faces that were doing all the work, so that lube didn't even have to work right in there, so it worked out really well. Sliding it back up and down a couple of times. Filth all over everything. Yeah, I put, I put a few, well you can see some scratch marks there. From the screwdriver, she was digging in pretty hard. But that's only a plate, that doesn't matter. And this bit, oh, that's actually quite good that bit, but it does feel like it's a little slow. Thankfully these are made, like I say, I think this, this is zinc for sure, I'd say, because it's heavier than aluminium and probably a lot stronger. Again, quite a few marks on it, but you really don't have a choice. I could have maybe soaked it in petrol overnight or something, but while I'm pulling this thing to bits, I'd much prefer to get it back together while I can remember than have to worry about it leaving it overnight and trying to put it back together tomorrow. I'm sure it would be fine, but 
I'd still prefer to get it back together all in one go and then it clogs up your bench and everything if you do that so not the best yeah, this is a bit sticky feeling a bit slow I might even just since I'm not doing a proper resto otherwise I might put a bit of grease it probably only had lighter oil or something on it anyway but we'll oil that bit And in some ways you're probably better off putting oil on this shaft because at least it won't seize up if this doesn't get used again which it's not going to i mean it need, ideally needs new belts that idler oh yeah that's quite grooved that idler looking at it well it's maybe not that bad it looks visually bad oh, you can feel it a bit with your fingernail it's not the best and the heads are completely worn so it's not like this and it's mono anyway at the best of times so it's not like this unit's worth anything I don't think anyone's going to be a collector of these sort of things because it's really, it's not a hi-fi unit at all how did this spring go? I thought that went underneath there oh it goes across that way <laughs> that would explain it what I might do, yeah like I said, I'll just put some oil on it even though there's probably no real need to preserve this thing at all but rather than grease, it's just going to go hard again, give it half a chance. Try and get that over most of the face of that thing. Out of the way. How does that thing go? Should go back. Of course, everything jams on everything. That does some stopping it going on, I think it's just a bit tight still, that's it ah, loose as now that's what I like to see now we're going to try and get this spring back on I'll use the side cutters again, it was a pretty tight one anyway that'll test it, yeah, beautiful this record lever do? Well the record lever's come off something. Did I take a spring off there? I can't remember. Oh did that that must have gone that way around. Yeah because that's the upside. Ah oh, beautiful. Now I've got to put all the pieces back on that I took off. So that's the capstan goes through there. Whoops. Yeah that's the bit that pushes up and down on the as this thing what is it as it something moves it pushes the pinch roller up I thought that would have been a fixed thing but anyway yeah, I'm not sure where that spring went I thought oh, I went to the chassis I think I took that. that was one of the first things I took off from memory I guess I might as well put a little bit of oil refresh the oh that's the upper shaft we don't want to oil the bit that the tape goes on but just a little bit of oil on the capstan and now which bits did I have to do in what order? I think everything was on the top, but I could be wrong. So we've got the pinch roller. Yeah, that's got this little brass piece. I don't think we've lost one off that, so I don't know where that other little brass piece appeared from. Then that plastic thing. And uh, I'll get the oil all over everything. I better clean my hands off a bit. Don't want oil on your rubber parts. Ah, oh, there was this little piece. Yeah, that went on that piece there. I guess I should really be wiping some of this off while I can get to it. Although a lot of that is getting into the metal. I think it's actual corrosion rather than just dirt. It doesn't fall down, it goes the other way around, I think, doesn't it? Uh. And this is why you don't want to do it the next day because it's hard enough to remember at the moment where they went. Oh no, that's still not right because that is the face. 
So I thought that face is the bit the tape goes on. So I did have it right, but it didn't seem to want to go in there. Yeah, that's the worn face there with the brass coming through. Probably should give that a bit more of a clean. It almost wants a scour or something on that, I think, because it's probably high friction, potentially. Yeah, I don't know, it's just, some of it's a bit off colour. Ah, you fiddly little. And it does stand up there all right, I just for some reason it didn't feel like it was going to. Now oh, of course this piece moves up and I thought it was a bit far out of the tape path but that is meant to be until this piece comes down here, yeah, there we go, and that put, uh, those little bits push the push the little protective flap things down. Not quite sure how that's meant to sit but something like that, it is adjustable but Oh, so it's out of the way when we're in play mode anyway, so that why well, has it got tape wear on it then if it's out of the way it must be in certain modes maybe in rewind or something I don't know and we had this oh this other lever part what was that? oh that went across these two bits I think is that what it did yes so that's how this bit is attached yeah, I was going to say this bit that slides the pin roller height up and down must be connected into this somehow for some reason the pin roller sort of retracts downwards maybe when it's out of play mode to keep it out of the way of the tape because of course you've got to being a reel to reel you have to thread the tape in from below so the pin roller can't be in the way of the tape or you won't get the tape up around the heads and guides and stuff so that's what that's for oh, and this is a brass screw to make life difficult on a piece that it is sprung. Ah, oh, no, come on, get in there. Ah, oh, it's going to slip or slide all over the place. Got it, I think. Yes, that makes sense that we'd have a retracting pinch roller. Unlike in a cassette player. Okay, so now, yeah, we've got the yeah, that bit drops up and down. Pinch roller goes down. Yeah, so the tape comes in above the pinch roller when we lace it up, or thread it in, or whatever you want to call it. Ah, I think I just realised this head, you, you seem to hit the end of the azimuth adjustment rather quickly. But I think it's you've actually, because it, it pivots up and down on a central bent out piece so you probably actually got to loosen the other screw to get the head so we might be able to get a bit better sound out of it you never know if someone has fiddled with this in the past or anything is that everything there's a big circle what did that come off oh that'd be off this bit wouldn't it that'd be the piece that i took off to, to get this off That would be that one, and I think that's it. I was thinking about doing that little roller. It could do with a little bit of a. Well, it's not. Yeah, not touching anything. I'll just put some oil on it. It's only up against the metal bit, so I don't think a bit of oil in there. If it gets on the front of it or whatever, it's going to matter at all. Probably need to get a bit underneath it as well. That's got some sort of dried up grease, but that's basically riveted in there. So, oh, that's definitely freed it a bit. And the more it rolls, the better it'll probably get. Because I would like to pull that apart and clean it ideally, but it looks like we've got a metal post pressed into the die cast or probably moulded into it when it was cast. Anyway, that's getting better, that'll do. That'll just remove a little bit of friction. I don't think it really mattered, but while we're in here. Now we've got Sony actually moulded into this big flywheel nice little touch and that's got a felt pad on it ideally you'd probably re-lube all these bits I was going clean out some of this muck while I'm in here yeah it's got plenty of oily stuff on it so I think we'll leave that 
get that shaft up through that brass bushing thing. This has to come back. Oh, well, this has got to go right around and through a hole in the chassis. Which it doesn't seem to want to do. Come on, drop. Oh, that bit goes under that thing, does it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that little roller has to push against that pin there, but the record lever doesn't seem to want to go. Everything's clashing a bit. Oh, because there's something underneath blocking the record lever. That'd be right. So if we push that bit across, now we get our record lever down. Sort of. Is it the capstan now? Something's not sitting right. I don't know what that was, but I think the capstan just clicked up the bushing bit for it. And this is still catching on things, is it, or is it not? Now we're getting there. Now didn't this... Something isn't right here, that's not sitting right. Uh, wait up, what's going on? What is it? No, maybe it is. Oh yeah, that's the pinch roller. In, oh no, we're not disengaging them, are we? Okay, so something's still not right, and the capstan's not in the right. We're not actually, well, that's part of the problem. We're still not fully... Oh, this bit had to go, that's what went up there. So many bits and pieces, but this isn't actually sitting in the fully in the right spot. Does that matter? Why is that? Oh no, that's the pin troll, right? Oh, sort of disengaged, but not fully. No, nothing's. That arm's not coming back now. Okay. Oh, wait a Is it just that I've got. Oh, it's just, it is just this mecha slip because it hasn't. It's sliding downwards. Is that all it is then? If I hold that in position with the screw holes, uh, oh, you know, that's it. It is right. And I've got to pull, pop that back out of the way. The reason I had to get that out of the way was because to get that screw in. Uh, I think that still needs forcing up a bit. Ah, uh, wind. Now I see why these were so tight, because it's got that lever pushing against it. That seems to be sitting a bit high now. What's going on here? Did that... Oh, is that where that little... That's not where that little brass piece came from, is it? Well, it was when I was pulling this to bits. I reckon that little brass bit holds this up. Because it's actually pulling down a bit. Well, that's only a guess, but maybe that's what it was. Oh, is that long enough to go through there? It's probably not. The screw's... Oh, yeah, the screw's long enough to hold that little... I reckon that's where that bit was then. Yeah, it just simply puts a brake on the reel. That's it on there. Oh, well, am I going to lubricate that? I think a bit of oil on there won't hurt. That feels a bit better. A lot better and probably on this bit as well. Can I get in there? Yep. Bit more oil. I would normally wipe some of that off, but because it risks running down a bit. Oh, yeah, that's, that's more like it. That's way too oily there. I've actually splattered a bit on the thing, so i going to have to clean that off a bit. Don't want oil on the rubber bits or on these bits, especially when it's already slipping. But yeah, that feels a ton better. Actually, it slides up and down on this other shaft as well, doesn't help. I'll 
put the lid back on, didn't I? Just needs a little bit there. Yeah, all that is a lot freeing out. Yeah, that's good. Whoops. The other problem is this switch here has somehow disintegrated. I must have bumped that with something at some point. And that's always a risk. When you're not looking at it, at least this doesn't seem to have loose contacts in it. It's just got sliding contacts on the switch. Might be a good chance to actually give it a clean properly. Oh, those little metal pieces hold it there. At least I can get to the contacts. I might put a bit of, oh yeah, even just wiping it with a cotton bud gets a fair bit of the stuff off there. So I'll use a bit of brass on there. It's better than using metal polish of the sort of pasty type because it's just easier to get off and not get all over the place. Oh, look at that, like new. Yeah, that's on the outer sides of it. I think that the contacts touch. can actually bend up these little bits and remove this part but I'm not going to do that if I don't have to. This just needs the slightest rub and it's nice and clean again and we've also got all the other contacts very tarnished. Not surprising after many years and the conditions this thing was in. Ah so it's not the outside of the contacts I thought they rubbed along it it's the inside of these bits. Oh, how do we clean them? I don't think you do. So how do they originally... So you don't want to bend them out too far or you'll lose tension completely but you don't want them too close or you won't get the thing to slot in there. So do you have to slide them on from one end? Again, very hard to see what you're doing. Put those two over it. Oh, I just have to keep coming back out of its little hole. So I think I might have to unscrew this switch because the wires are getting in the way a bit. Well, this turned into a waste of time, more than I planned. So I've got to kind of slot them in. I just wonder if you can kind of get to one side and slot under that and under that, that kind of works, but then I've got to get the other two yeah, they're in, so that's got them at least, so we can should be able to bend those back up I don't want to risk that coming out again, because that was enough work as it was I need to hold that little bit of Bakelite in place fingers crossed everything's right These flyers fit down that little slot. Yeah, that's got that side in, I think. Seems to be okay. Oh, now we can't see the other side when we do it. Although we can see it through these holes, I guess. Oh, yeah, this is quite a fairly little... I think we've got those two in it, but now the fake light won't go in through the metal work. Now the other two... Got one. Can't get the second one. Oh, there we go. That's it, I think. If I can just get the bake light in the right spot. Oh, yeah, it's just a matter of jiggling it around a bit and making sure that the sliding bit fits into the other ones. And now I can't bend that against that, can I? Okay, if I can get that one bent over. Is it bending? Oh, you've got to be careful, you don't want to really leave her against the bake light, of course, because that's flimsy stuff. Oh, God, but you can't really help touching it. Whatever you do. That's it. I think that's it. I hope that works after all that. It's got to be better, hasn't it? Yeah, no idea what bumped that, but something obviously hit it. Oh, we don't have the other pins in place, do we? Which I don't know how much they matter for the getting the tape 
in the right spot, but we can try it like this, I guess. It's only around the heads. The other Tandy tape seemed to be running a bit slow. I'm not sure if it's just a recording. I tried this original pub with no beer thing again and I'm not 100% sure that's running at the right speed but it sounds a bit more like it might be. Don't know, that might even be a bit slow. So I'm not 100% sure this thing's running at the right speed, but it should be, I would think. I don't think there's much could go wrong with it as long as it's set to 50 hertz mains or whatever, I guess. Another thing I could try is actually doing a bit of recording over it. So what do we do here? That's the record button on. Maybe if we hit forward. Uh, I don't know how we... How do we press that? Then that locks it in. So which mic? Which one's the mic? An external speaker, mic, or auxiliary? Maybe we'll try recording a bit of CD onto it. That'd be the first for this machine. Ooh, don't we have too much level? Uh, which one? No, that one. That's still peeking out into the red a bit too much probably I think it's got an auto mode that doesn't do anything that just kills it I guess we should add the switch in a particular position but it probably doesn't matter There's something on there right I forgot it's that horrible song I don't know what songs what on it I guess we could plug it in yeah. oh, press record did manage to get the head slightly better by tweaking that other screw but it's still not much better than it was so I don't think we're getting anything too great out of this and God knows what condition this tape's in, at least it's not all falling to bits, I guess there's something. Yeah, it sounds a bit slow. Even on its own recording, so that's interesting. So it may have some speed issue with it. But I guess it's the sort of thing, even though it looks very obsolete and basic now, sort of thing that led Sony to go on to doing video recorders and everything else, get, once they got some practice building this type of thing. It's not that big a step to setting up to, I guess, reel-to-reel -reel video. Just a completely different head system and stuff I guess and way of way of doing the signal like an FM signal or whatever they did to get actual video tape to record onto a tape or to get video signal to record onto a tape but yeah it's certainly early early bit of Sony tech where they would have learned some of their later things from yeah, interesting it's it's a valve and the valve still seem to work I mean you never know you might get it a bit louder or something with some new valves if they're down in emissions or something but they're basically doing their job and yeah that little windows dropped out there but it's sort of working but has had a lot of use this thing someone obviously used it a lot and has pretty much worn it out so they certainly got their money's worth out of it. Interesting little badge there. Is that like a little... I would have thought that would go the other way maybe, but... That's just a little sine wave, whether that's meant to be the S for Sony or something. 
Yeah, interesting unit anyway. And I've got the worst of it running, but yeah, it does seem to have a speed issue that really needs new heads and a complete overhaul. But for a bit of old junk that has probably been lying around for decades unused and in very poor conditions, it has actually survived extremely well. Can't have been too wet or anything because this case is at least not sort of water damaged or anything, but oh, that's right, that's what these little square bits on the end are for there for the actual latch. Things I thought I might have been hiding a screw, but I mean, it's absolutely filthy. I'm not sure if any of that will come off. It might do. I think a little bit starting to come off just from spraying that on there. But that's the other problem. You'd never get this case probably looking overly great again. You never know with a good screw. Oh God, look at the filth coming off that. It is kind of going back. I guess it's a kind of vinyl, textured vinyl. Oh yeah, there is white coming through under all that. Uh, whether it was white, off-white of some sort, creamy colour maybe. Interesting to see whether it's recoverable, but yeah, it's got some darker patches on it. Maybe it was meant to be like that. Not knowing its original colour doesn't help. Whether it was meant to have this sort of patchy, I doubt it. Nice little badge there worth nicking off it maybe. But it goes to show if you gave it a good clean and spent a lot of time on it. It probably could be restored a bit, but I don't think it, this was ever a particularly nice looking sort of unit. people would really want in their home or anything. I mean, with the lid off it, it's not so bad, but the box itself, very plain looking thing when it's closed up. And yeah, even when it's opened, I mean, they're pretty unexciting. I guess if you left a couple of reels on there, well, obviously much better condition than these ones. Cracked up, beaten up old things. I think I'll throw them in the rubbish. Then maybe it'll look good somewhere. This thing I think is made to sit on these rubber feet, so it's meant to be flat. So again, these sort of flat style ones are not really what I want. Of course, the speaker would be covered up if you stood it upright. So I don't think there's any real interest in these things. Actually, it looks better on the camera than it looks to me at the moment. <laughs> a bit shinier, but it's certainly a bit better now it's cleaned up. But a bit of an old novelty. I thought it was worth saving. It would have probably rotted into the ground by now if I didn't save it. It would have been a lot worse condition, that's for sure. But I don't really have any desire to do anything with it myself. But it is always interesting to see how well built these old things are. They're certainly very solidly made and designed to last. And I think I probably should have took that grill out. Let's see if that actually does come out, but that grill's got quite a few dings in it. Just out of interest, we'll see if we can get this, looks like this bottom strip comes off. I'll probably have to take the top one off as well to really get it out, but that can probably be repaired. Even this bottom strip's damaged. I've got a really small screwdriver. Yeah, it's stuck on a bit. What is stuck there? Ooh, I'm ripping something a bit. Uh, the Oh, it's actually that little badge is pulling out the black cloth behind it. Yeah, I need to bend some of those little bits up. Unfortunately, it's had a rough life. That'll make it look a bit better, probably. Ideally, I probably should take it right out and hammer it flat or something. Probably putting something like this behind there. And tapping it with a screwdriver or something soft will fix some of that. So 
So you can sort of restore these things if you really want to. All the dirt behind this thing, and that's a bit bent as well. Try and straighten that out a bit. I've left a lump in it, I think. Yeah, that'll make it look a little bit of a nurse. She's still a bit rough. So I think that's all I'll do with this one. Maybe I can find someone that'd be interested in doing something with it, but it might be good for parts. But it's taken up my room and I don't really want it anymore. I'm not chucking in the junk shit here and keep it for now, but I can't even really see it as a good display piece in this condition, which is a bit of a shame, but nice to have a play. I really didn't do much work on reel to reels, so it's nice to have a play with one occasionally, just as something different to work on. But that's about it for this video, so thanks for watching.